everybody from Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati. We bid you welcome to Reds Baseball. The Reds and the Los Angeles Dodgers, they wind up the three-game set today, and, well, you could almost categorize it a must game for John McNamara's ball club. The Dodgers having taken the first two, five to two, and then three to two last night to, along with Houston, now lead the Reds by four and a half games in the National League Western Division. On the mound for the Reds after his tenth win of the season, right-hander Paul Mosco, and pitching for the Dodgers, the best they have to offer in left-hander Jerry Royce. And we'll be back to take a look at the starting lineups in just a moment. If you're ready now, the starting lineups today. First for the Dodgers, leading off at second base, Dave Lopes. Hitting second in right field, Jay Johnstone. Dusty Baker will bat third and play left field. Hitting fourth at first base, Steve Garvey. Ron Say will bat fifth and play third base. Hitting number six, Rick Mundy in center field. Steve Yeager will do the Dodgers catching and bat number seven. Hitting eight, the shortstop, Daryl Thomas. And batting ninth and pitching for Los Angeles, left-hander Jerry Royce. Again for the Dodgers, it's Lopes at second base, John Stone in right field, and Baker in left field. Garvey at first base, Say at third base, Monday in center. With Yeager catching, Thomas at shortstop, and Royce on the mound. For the Reds, Dave Collins will lead off and play center field. Ronnie Oster will be at second base, batting number two. Hitting third, Dave Concepcion at shortstop. Hitting in the cleanup spot in left field, George Foster. Batting fifth at first base, Danny Dreesen. Hitting number six, Ray Knight at third base. Paul Householder will play right field and bat seventh. Hitting eighth and doing the catching, making his first start of the year, Vic Corral. And batting ninth, the Reds pitcher, right-hander Paul Mosco. Once more for Cincinnati, it's Collins in center field, Oster at second base, and Concepcion at shortstop. Foster in left field, Dreesen at first base, Knight at third. While the bottom third again will have Householder in right, Corral catching, and Mosco pitching. Ground ball left side, that's going to get a run in. Here's Darrell Thomas unloading to first. In time, two out, but Collins scores, and the Reds lead 1-0. Dave Concepcion gets a run home with a ground ball into the hole at shortstop. His 67th run batted in. Two out for George Foster. Royce to Foster. Swung on and drilled to right field. That's going to be a base hit. Ball short hops to wall. Foster takes a turn. Digging hard for second. John Stone throw late. And Foster with a double out of the wrong barrel. Second hit in the inning for Cincinnati. And George's 18th two base hit of the year. Well, the last call for the Cincinnati Reds, that being, of course, the last half of the ninth inning. The Reds needing two runs to get even, three runs to win, trailing 3-1. to one, And Tom Lasorda leaving nothing at all the chance. As he gets two working in his bullpen, the young rookie left-hander, Steve Howe, and the right-hander, Don Stanhouse. Got another defensive change for Los Angeles. Mickey Hatcher has replaced Rick Mundy in right field. And for the Reds, it's going to be George Foster, Danny Dreesen, and Ray Knight. So Cincinnati leads, needs some ninth-inning heroics here to pull this one out of the fire. Jerry Royce's mastery over the Reds this season has been nothing short of truly outstanding. Three earlier starts, three victories, trying to make it 4-0 and on the year against Cincinnati and 11-1 and against the true contending clubs in the National League, and that includes the Eastern Division clubs as well as those here in the West. Okay, here's a pitch to Foster, and he takes it inside for a ball. It would be truly interesting to know what Steve Carlton's record would be against the contending ball clubs, despite having won 22 ball games, I can't believe it could be any better than 11 and 1, or 10 and 1 as it stands officially right now. One ball and one strike on Foster as he fouls it away. Well, they talk about the Cy Young candidates, and certainly Carlton would have to be considered the the pace setter right now, having won 22 games. But Jerry Royce with 16 wins, Jim Bibby of the Pirates with 16. Foster, who's doubled twice and three times up, hits one into left field and hit it well, but Dusty Baker will be there and makes a catch. One out for Danny Dreesen. Danny has bounced a shortstop, struck out, and drawn a base on balls. He got that walk in the 
Seventh inning following Foster's double to center when the Reds posed a threat, but Royster was able, uh, Royce was able to overcome it. Threeson grounds it towards second. Off to his left for the pickup. Davy Lopes on to Garvey. Two away. Ray Knight 0 for 2 with a sacrifice bunt. Two out, bases are empty. Royce kicks and fires. Knight takes a fastball for a strike. Royce swatting at a flying insect around the mound. That's been the only thing that's really bothered him since the first inning, other than the seventh inning threat. Strike one pitch. Knight bounces to third. Round say backs up, makes a play, throws, and he got him. And that ends the ball game. Jerry Royce goes a distance, limiting the Reds to a first inning run and a total of five base hits as the Dodgers sweep this three game series and drop the Reds five and one half games off the pace. Final score, LA three, Cincinnati one. We'll be back in just a moment. Reds needed a win today to avoid a three-game Dodger sweep, and they did not get it. Jerry Royce picks up his 17th win of the season and his fourth without a loss against the Cincinnati Reds as the Dodgers spotted the Reds a run in the first inning and then relied on the bat of veteran Rick Mundy to produce a 3-1 victory. Cincinnati scored in the opening inning when Dave Collins led off with a hit to left field, picked up his 68th stolen base, advanced to third on Ronnie Oster's bounce out to third base and scored when Dave Concepcion grounded out to shortstop. The lead proved to be short-lived because the Dodgers came back to go out in front, and as things turned out, out in front to stay in the second inning. With one out, Ron Say drew a walk off Paul Mosco. Uh, Mosco then ran the count to three and two on Monday, and Monday hammered a fastball to straightaway center field. It found its way into the green seats, a blow estimated somewhere between 425 and 450 feet. The ninth homer of the year for Monday, and the Dodgers were out in front two to one. They came back to score their final run in the fourth inning on a double to right center by Ron Say and a single by Monday who had all three Dodger runs batted in. Cincinnati got uh, a base hit off from Moscow in the third inning, and then they were not to get another hit until the leadoff double in the seventh inning by George Foster. Danny Dreesen followed with a base on balls, and it appeared the Reds had really something solid going. But after Ray Knight laid down a sacrifice bunt to move the tying runs into scoring position, Jerry Roy struck out Paul Householder on three pitches and got pinch hitter Hector Cruz on a first pitch ground ball to second to end the threat. The Reds got one more hit the rest of the way, and that was an infield chopper over the mound off the bat of Ronnie Oster in the eighth inning. The Dodgers had three runs, eight hits, no errors. They stranded five. The Reds with a run, five hits with an error, left five men on. Roy 17 and six with a win. Mosco nine and seven with the loss. And four of his 16 decisions this season have come against Los Angeles. Two victories and two defeats. So to say the Reds had their work cut out for them is a mild understatement. They now take on the San Francisco Giants in the first of a two-game series tomorrow night. Tom Seaver pitching extremely well will be the man on the mound of games beginning for the Reds and pitching for the Giants, left-hander Bob Nepper. Plenty of seats available for the two games against the Giants and the two games to wrap up the homestand against the Houston Astros. And as for us, we'll be on the air with the pregame shows tomorrow night on most of these same stations beginning at 7.35 Cincinnati time. Again, the final score today in a game that took two hours and 11 minutes to play before a crowd of 34,038. The Dodgers three and the Reds one.